I um, probably gave you the impression that you could pretty well figure out how to size the pump in your house uh, just by looking at friction tables and then uh, knowing the static height, adding those up, you get the head of the pump, you know the flow rate, and uh, you know, box your uncle. But, you know what? The world's always a little bit more complicated than that. What happens if you have uh, a house that has more than one apparatus running, let me say a big house, you got a shower, you got a bath, you got a washing machine, you got a, you got a, I don't know, a sink, you got this or that, you know? And uh, lots of stuff might be going on at once. So you want to size a system for, you know, making sure that everybody's happy, you know, like, uh, you know, your daughter needs to have a shower at a certain time, and, uh, you know, your wife has to, needs water, too, to do whatever she needs to do, right? And uh, sometimes you need to do stuff, too. So, uh, anyway. So, how do we deal with systems that have, uh, you know, more than one output? Okay, let's take a look. Let's say I have a, um, well, we have a, always have a uh, suction tank somewhere. All right, and we have our pump, and we're going to pump to an upper level, let's say, to a shower. All right, here we we'll make this nice little bath there, and uh, maybe we'll pump a little bit further to uh, I don't know a sink or something like that, somewhere a little bit further. So. Which one of these two is going to uh, be the... Uh, how is the pump going to deal with these two consumers? Well, obviously the pump doesn't know it has two consumers, it doesn't know anything. But um, we have to accommodate the shower. So let's deal with the shower first. We know, first of all, we're going to set the flow rate of the shower. Let's say we set the flow rate of the shower to 7 gallons a minute, right? And this consumer down here, even though it's further away, uh, let's set him at uh, set him at three. All right? We would like to get seven here and three here at the same time. Why? That's our initial our initial requirement. So we know we want seven and three. So the pump itself has to be able to deliver ten. Right? That's a given. Now, how do we ensure we're going to have seven here and three here? Well, what, you're, what we're going to do is we're going to first calculate what the uh, friction head is. We're going to want to take these points here and this point here, this point here and this point here, and we're going to do a calculation of friction head and static head for these two, for the flow that goes through this branch. And then we'll do a calculation for the, the flow that goes through this branch from this point to this point. And whichever flow rate requires the most head is going to be how we're going to size this pump. So in other words, if this, this guy requires, uh, because we're going 15 feet up and we have 10 feet ahead, this guy, this path requires 25 feet of head. And then we do a calculation here, and even though this is farther away, but it's maybe on the same level, only requires uh, 15 feet in. Right? So we're going to size the pump for 25 feet ahead at this flow rate. Now, you're going to say, well, how do I know that these flow rates are actually going to happen? <laughs> because uh, in the end, I'm going to put in a one-inch pipe here, half-inch pipe here, or whatever, and this is what I can get, and what happens is going to happen. So, the way to ensure that this is what you're going to get is you're going to put a valve here, and maybe a valve here, but what you're going to do is you're going to, this valve here is going to control this output. So, when you start your system, if you've designed everything properly, and this is capable of 10 feet of head at the maximum head here required for this shower. When you turn this whole thing on, you're going to adjust this flow rate here so that you're matching your 3 GPM, and this should automatically set itself to 7 GPM because 
that's the way you designed it. So, is that convincing? <laughs> do, you, do you buy this argument that uh, you know what, what I um, what I'm saying? What I'm saying to you is that the path that requires the most head is the one that you're going to have to size the pump for. In other words, you're going to have a pump that's beefy enough to supply this guy. And if you can supply this guy and the total is going to match these two totals, and if you put a valve here and adjust that valve to be a three, you're going to get seven here, you know, pretty, pretty close. And that's, you know, that's the way it is. You're going to have to believe me on this. If you don't believe me, well, I did actually do the math on all this and, and de did the um, actual proof uh, that this is, this is what happens in the real world. And I'm just giving you the, uh, the short version. So if you want to check it out, you can download my book on, uh, on uh, Pump Fundamentals uh, on how to, this is actually figured out in, you know, in the greatest detail. All right? Take care. Bye-bye. Timmy's teacher asked the class, what is the chemical formula for water? Timmy pipes up and replies, H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O. Timmy's teacher asks, where did you get that from? Timmy replies, well, yesterday you said it was H to O.